to the second part of the diagnosis causes and the defects. In the last video we saw about the three problems that is commonly associated with our engine that was high fuel consumption, high engine oil consumption and the low engine oil pressure. The next two problems this, which are associated with the engine problem will be discussed in this video. So let's start with the overheating of the engine. Right now the overheating of the engine is the biggest problem of the engine. The engine should not get overheated in the vehicle. The overheating can be happening because of the problems which is associated with our cooling system. If the engine is getting overheated then it will give you signal by stopping. Right? If the engine is overheated then the vehicle will stop because of the overheating and if so we, we let the engine to cool in the steady condition then again the engine will be started. So we might not, not notice the engine overheating that easily. And until we notice the overheating of the engine, the problem might have created some more damages to the vehicle engine and that will not be repairable or the engine will have to be rebuilt after getting the problems because of the overheating. The overheating can happen in the engine if the coolant level in the engine is on the lower side. So if the coolant level is on the lower side what we do is we will refill the coolant level. If the coolant level is proper, then there is problem of the accumulation of the rust and the scale in the cooling system. The cooling system or from the pipes where the cooling water is getting flowed, if that is rusted or if the scale is being created in the system, then it can also not let the cooling water supply as much as it should in the normal condition and the proper cooling will not be getting to the engine because of that as well the overheating can be happened if the hoses of the cooling system is collapsed which means from one of the parts or from one of the pipes the hoses or the pipe has been collapsed and from that collapsed part the cooling water is not getting supplied in the engine right so because of the no cooling water there is 100% chances of the engine getting overheated because the cooling process is being stopped because we are not supplying the cooling water because our hose has been collapsed at one point. Next thing that can be problem is the thermostat is defective. Right? The thermostat is given in the cooling system which supplies the cooling water whenever required. If the thermostat is not giving the signal to supply the cooling water in the engine, then there will be no cooling water in the engine even though the, if the engine is getting overheated. So the thermostat is an important component for the cooling system and if it is faulty then it has to be repaired or if the repair is not possible then the replacement of the thermostat is necessary. After, if there is also a problem or defect in the water pump, then it can also not supply the cooling water in the engine and because of that, again the overheating can also happen in the engine as well. Next thing is, if the fan belt which is connected to our engine is, if it is loose or gone, then the fan will not work properly and the proper cooling will not be applied to our engine and that can also create the overheating in the engine as well. The after boil can also be a problem in case of the engine overheating as well. The after boil can be a case of the recirculation of the cooling water. When cooling water comes by contact in the engine and getting the heat from the engine, if it, if it again boils when we are recirculating the cooling water, then it can create a problem in the cooling system and it will not let the cooling water pass through that cooling system because after boiling there will be a gas seeding that happens in the cooling system and it will 
restrict the cooling water flow and because of that overheating of the engine can occur. Last problem can be the level of the oil is if it is too low. If the oil is not properly being supplied to the engine or if the level of the oil is low, then also because of the lesser duplication, the friction will increase between the reciprocating parts of the engine and that friction will generate the heat and after one point that value of heat will be too much higher so that the engine overheating will occur. So next is the poor pickup. If the pickup of the vehicle when we are accelerating the vehicle is not proper then we will not like to drive the vehicle. We will say that the pickup of the vehicle is poor and I don't like to drive the vehicle as it's not getting the speed that I like to have when I start the vehicle. The problems that can create the poor pickup in the vehicle can be if the fuel pump is in a bad condition then there can be a poor pickup in the vehicle. The fuel pump will not supply the fuel in the engine in the proper quantity and because of the lesser quantity of the fuel the proper acceleration will not be obtained because of the bad fuel pump. If the fuel filter is clogged and in that case also again the fuel will not be supplied in the engine as well in the quantity that we like to have. Next thing if the air filter is dirty, right? if the supply of air is reduced then also the burning of the fuel will be affected because air is required to burn the fuel. If the air quantity is not properly getting from the air filter then also the power of the engine will be reduced and the pickup of the engine will also be reduced. If there is an ex clock in the exhaust manifold, right? In the case of the exhaust manifold, if it is clogged, then the exhaust gases while going out from the exhaust pipe, it will create a back pressure towards the engine. That back pressure affects the pressure which is generated with during the combustion. And these two works as the negative force and the power which was generated gets reduced because of the back pressure which is generated from the exhaust manifold. Right. So the exhaust manifold should be cleaned and it should not be clogged to get the proper pickup of the vehicle. And if the injectors are bad in the case of the engine or in the case of the diesel and also in petrol as well we use nowadays the injectors. If the injector is not supplying the proper amount of the fuel then also the poor pickup will be happen because the power which is generated in the engine is not sufficient to drive the vehicle to get the proper pickup of the vehicle. Last thing is the, if the spark plugs in the case of the petrol engine is in a bad condition. If the spark plug is not providing the proper intensity of the spark then it can also create the lower pickup or the poor pickup in the vehicle because the amount of fuel which is required to be burnt during the combustion will not be burnt because of the poor spark in the spark plug. And so these are the causes of the poor pickup. Next we will see about the maintenance of the vehicle body. Right, the vehicle body needs maintenance when, is, when there is an outer damage to the vehicle body. There is mainly one process that is required to be done on the vehicle if there is a dent on the vehicle. The denting process is required to be done on the vehicle. It is mainly involves the sheet metal work or the outer sheet metal work. If they are damaged, the body panels of the vehicle such as doors, bonnets or the fenders of the vehicle and that dent can be removed by the help of the denting process. The denting process can be of the two types. One is the paintless denting. If the paint is not being removed from the vehicle, then generally with the simple coolers that is attached to our vehicle body and that coolers will be attached and after creating the vacuum at the point of the attachment we will just pull the part which has been dented in the vehicle. 
By the help of a simple ruler, we can do the painless tenting if the paint is not removed during the tenting in the vehicle. If the paint is being removed in the painting process, then the painting process will be done after doing the tenting process. To do the painting process, what we require to do is first thing is we will clean the surface where the dent has happened. After cleaning the surface, the small grinding will be done until we get the flat surface with the dent that is been happen on the vehicle. After the paper, the sand paper will be brushed on that after doing the grinding and sanding. Next thing is we will prepare a filler that will be filled on the dents that has been happened on the vehicle. To get the surface with the normal surface of the sheet metal, the fillers will be prepared and that with fillers will be applied on the surface that has been grinded by the government wheel. After applying that filler, we will again use the sandpaper and with the help of sandpaper we will remove the extra surface that has been created by the filling and we will get the one layer of the vehicle sheet metal. After getting the vehicle sheet metal, the paint will be starting to be painted on the surface where we did the grinding. After doing the painting, again the primer is being applied on the painting, then applying after applying the primer, we will again use the sandpaper, we will clean the surface of our vehicle and after at the last, the last painting coat will be given by the help of the spray painting method. So this is how the damping and painting process is done on the vehicle whenever there is a dent and if the paint is removed from the vehicle. Right, so in this video we saw about the two complaints that arise from the engine and also the maintenance that is required in the vehicle body that is painting and denting process. Right, so from next lecture we will start a new chapter that is chapter number 3 which is on the garage practices. Until then, thank you so much.